Hello there, and welcome to my channel, Novice Modeling in the Midlife Crisis. Today I'm going to do you a little uh, What's in the Box kit review of this Tamiya 172 Vought F4U stroke 1D Corsair. Now, I actually got this from my local model, model shop. Please do support your local model shops. They're probably struggling at the moment, but you know, sometimes you have to pay a quid or so more than what you can get them for online, but let's try and keep these guys open. And this one cost me $18.99. Um, so, as is uh, how I like to do these films, I'm just going to read you a quick bit of blurb off the uh, instruction sheet that Tammy provide, just so we can get a little bit of history off the plane that we're, talk we're having a look at. Okay, so decide, ooh, designed around the new Pratt & Whitney 2000 horsepower radial, radial engine and tuning the largest propeller ever attached to a fighter plane, the Vought F4U Corsair became a legend in its own time. The F4U1 was the first production version of the Corsair. It had an inverted gull wing and a framed canopy with a flat top. However, many problems were found soon. For example, in the port wing, stall overgave the Corsair to unstable landing. Another problem was poor visibility because of its long nose and framed canopy. Therefore, F4U1A, the cockpit was raised about seven inches and the frame canopy was replaced with a semi-bubble canopy design and taller tail wheel strut and a taller tail wheel strut was equipped sorry about that was introduced oh geez i'm making a right mess of that aren't i anyway let's start here f4u1d was clear with clear vision canopy on a frame on oh, heck. sorry i'm getting a bit tongue-tied the f4u1d with clear vision canopy on frameless was introduced later for more visibility i don't think that makes sense it's not just me also, the F4U1D had two pylons under the centre wing section that could carry the bombs up to £1,000 and the napalm. Yeah, it's not written very well, actually. It's not just me. I'm not tripping over words. It's badly written, which is kind of surprising for Tamiya. Furthermore, five, five inch rockets could be carried under each wing. Therefore, in 1944, the F4U-1D was formally deployed as the first carrier-based aircraft of Corsair planes. Being, beginning by placing the F4U-1D as Marine Squadron's VMF-124 and VMF-213 aboard the Essex. On the way to the Philippines, the F4U-1D was used for attacking Japan as the first operation from US Navy. Oh, jeez was used for attacking, attacking Japan as the first operation from US Navy in 1945. About 3,700 amounts of F4U1D were produced. Yeah, this isn't me tripping over words. This is actually how it's written. Then it held an established position from US Navy because of its ability and reliance. Come on, Tamiya, you can do better than that, surely. Anyway, let's have a look at the instructions, and they are nicely laid out, as you'd expect from Tamiya. It's a shame about their blurb, which is awful. And we can see we've got multiple sections in easy to uh, look at diagrams. So even a novice model like myself should be able to put this kit together with a reasonable amount of success. And as we can see, we've got the uh, painting diagrams here as well. Now I've got to be honest, I bought I bought this one because I just love that. It's blue, it's got a yellow nose cone on it, and I think it's awesome. I mean obviously the person that constructed this and painted it up is an expert and if I can achieve half of that level when I'm building this, I'll be well chuffed. Um, we've also got this tech tips, which is gonna be really useful for a Muppet like myself. And hopefully that's gonna help me a little bit. We've got the uh, decals. There's two different decal versions available for this plane. I don't know which one I'm going to go for. I think if you go with the yellow um, front here, you can't use these nice checkered strips, which uh, that's a bit of a shame, but you've got to do these things accurately, I suppose. As far as the sprues are concerned, we've got one sprue with the canopy. It's a three-piece sprue, so hopefully I don't make too much from a mess of that. Or yeah, no, It's actually a two-piece sprue. You just get two options or... Maybe it's two chances at not making a mess. Thanks, Tamiya, that's really helpful of you. We've got the wings, and we've got some nice detail on here with the panel lines and whatever, which are obviously recessed, because this is a nice modern model. And 
Yeah, the wheels are smooth. The engine here looks quite nice. We've got a really nice detailed cockpit going on here. Uh, yeah, this cockpit green looks really nice. I need to get my hands on some of that. Yeah, we've got nice detail here in the, on the uh, cockpit, cockpit instruments as well. So that looks pretty cool. And here we have the main body with, I think this is a um, extra fuel tank maybe, or maybe it's a bomb. I'm, I'm not quite sure. We've got, oh, this is really nice. We've got the, um, whatever it's called, a little wheel on the back with the arrestor hook for carrier launched airplanes on there. That's really nice. I'm going to have to be careful not to break that. And we have this really big propeller that they talked about in the blurb. So, anyway, that's my little review complete. I hope you liked it. And I hope you enjoyed my wafflings on as usual. Uh, questions and suggestions are always welcome on my channel. I do try to answer as many as I can as possible. Uh, please like and subscribe and join me for my model building ride. Uh, incidentally, I think I'm up to 220 odd subscribers now, which has jumped about 50 in the last 48 hours. I'm not, I mean, I didn't really intend to do these sort of, I don't know what I intended when I started doing this YouTube, and to be honest with you, I just thought it'd be a bit of a laugh, but it seems to be going quite well. So uh, thanks for that, and uh, join me for my uh, model building ride. Be seeing you.